The Ghosts of Kingsley Plantation Zephaniah Kingsley had a reputation for being quite a decent guy, as far as slave owners go. Once his slaves had completed their assigned work for the day, they were free to do whatever they liked, such as fishing or gardening. If they produced and sold anything, they kept the profits. Kingsley married a slave, named Anna, in an African cemetery, and she went on to become quite wealthy in her own right, he even learned an African language. The real villain on that plantation in Jacksonville, Florida was another slave, who raped, and murdered the slave women. His fellow captives hanged him from an oak tree, and his ghost is said to still stalk the place, locals call him Old Red Eyes, because that's what most people see of him down the nearby road. The glowing orbs appear just behind your car, and the sounds of his victims follow them along the roadside. A second ghost with glowing eyes, resides in an unfinished house on the plantation. If you have a good heart then the ghost takes the form of a white woman, that waves at you. If you're a bad person, you see a wolf with flaming eyes. Booger Hollow. One of the most famous uprisings in the history of slavery was led by Nat Turner in Southampton County, Virginia in 1831. Rebel slaves killed 55 people, and many more slaves were killed in revenge. The act made many slave owners uneasy, and they marched their most unruly slaves further south to be sold to anyone that would take them. One such slave was named William and he was sold to a farmer named Benjamin Hawking. Hawking was a brute, with a short temper, and a penchant for violence, while William was a natural rebel whose spirit had remained unbroken by several owners. Together they were a volatile combination, and Hawking became increasingly harsh in his treatment of William. Eventually, William had enough. When Hawking was about to begin a whipping, William grabbed an axe, and put it to use on his owner's head. William's freedom was very short-lived. He was arrested, and thrown in jail, and the sheriff happily turned him over to a violent mob. The angry crowd took the slave into the countryside, and beat him to death with leather straps. William's body was thrown into a sinkhole, and other slaves were forbidden from retrieving his body. One story says that, a few weeks later, a farmer passed near the area, where William had died, he heard screaming and assumed another punishment was in progress. When he went to investigate he saw a slave bound, screaming, and writhing in pain. Yet there was no one else around, and the slave seemed to be suffering at invisible hands. The farmer fled, but many other people claimed to have seen the ghost of William, tearing at his bonds. The sighting stopped suddenly in 1945. Perhaps William broke free. Savannah Harbor. In 1820, the international slave trade was technically banned in the U.S. Pirates, however, made their money gathering escaped slaves, and shipping them overseas, such as to the Caribbean and South America. The French ship Gritly was one vessel, that took part in this, and in 1854 it pulled into Georgia's Savannah Harbor to collect 71 runaways. The slaves, most of them Congolese, were rounded up, and put onto the boat. Most of them were chained up, but some were restrained with only rope. None of them wanted to be there, and none of them were the sort to go down without a fight. There's a reason the slave owners, were willing to be rid of this particular runaways. When the ship began leaving the harbor, many of the slaves on deck, were able to break free from their rope restraints, and leap into the sea. The crew shot at the escapees, but their problems were only beginning. Slaves below deck began assaulting the ship directly, breaking away some boards on the starboard side. The ship took on water, and ultimately sank, the captain too proud, and stupid to accept help from local tugboats. Today, some sailors report that, they can feel a force pulling them off course in the harbor. They also claim to have heard voices, in French, and Bantu languages, slaves, still struggling with their last attempt at freedom, that are pulling at modern ships. Some speculate that they may not know the slave trade has ended, and that attacking ships is their way to get vengeance.
Buckner Mansion. The Buckner Mansion in New Orleans will be very familiar to fans of the TV show, American Horror Story, it was the setting for the third season. You can even rent the place yourself, if you have a few thousand dollars to spare, if you do, then it comes with its own housekeeper. Unfortunately, the housekeeper in question died in the 19th century. Miss Josephine was a freed black woman in charge of the slaves, that worked at the house. She ran the house flawlessly, and she continues to do so after the Civil War, even when all the slaves were gone. She was so dedicated that, guests say she still runs the house today. Guests have reported the sound of a broom, and the scent of lemon her favorite moving from room to room. The chandeliers swing, doors open and close themselves, and lights flash on and off. Some people have seen her apparition at the window. A sense of sadness can apparently be felt in her room, the result of the various slave women, and babies that died there during childbirth. Doesn't worry about that if you rent it, though, as you have seven other bedrooms to choose from. The Hunt Morgan House The Hunt Morgan House, historically known as Hopamont, is famous in its own right. Thomas Hunt Morgan was born there in 1865, and he won the 1933 Nobel Prize in Medicine. But while we love fascinating figures from the history of science, the Morgan family's housekeeper, Bouviette James, is the star of this story. Nicknamed Aunt Betty, James cared for the Morgan children in the mid-19th century. Among them was Thomas Morgan's father Charlton. Along with his brothers, Charlton acted as a pallbearer, for Betty when she died shortly after the Civil War, the family had been strong supporters of slavery. The father of the house John Hunt Morgan earned the nickname, Thunderbolt of the Confederacy, so the respect they showed Betty reflects the mutual fondness between her, and the family. Betty was buried in the family plot. After her death, one of the Morgan children became very ill. A nurse was caring for him but dozed off. When she awoke, she saw a black woman in a turban, and red leather shoes stroking the child's forehead, humming a nursery rhyme. When the nurse approached, the figure vanished. The child later died, and the nurse told the story to Mrs. Morgan, and learned that the family had given red shoes to Betty as a gift. Mrs. Morgan was overjoyed that Aunt Betty was still around looking after the children, believing she would look after her dead son in the afterlife. Today, the house is a museum, and you can visit should you like to try, and see Betty for yourself.